We are now live. Hey, all right. What's going Hello. on, everybody? Sorry, sorry for the uh, delay. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, um, but hey, what's going on, everybody? We're uh, they're having an, we're having a. Sorry, I'm all all frazzled now. Uh, we're having a, a special <laughs> artist spotlight episode with my man, Tracy Tubera, the Uber illustrator supreme. Say hello, Tracy. What's going on? Uh, Hi, I'm Alex. Hello, everybody. I'm, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, man. Uh, and I'm Alex. I'm the uh, resident designer toy expert on the uh, social team. And then we have Cassidy. You'll see her in the comments. She's moderating. Uh, you'll hear her disembodied voice. Cassidy, say hello to everyone. Hello, I am the voice from above. The voice from above. And she's going to be taking your uh, questions and anything you have for Tracy. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about Tracy's DC Trinity, the superhero with sneakers line. Um, and she's going to be talking about life in general and Tracy in general. But uh, also I want to let you know we're giving away the Miles designer collectible toy that Tracy designed. Tracy, you got that figure? Where's that figure? Yeah. Here, there you go. Here you go. Oh, look at that. So we're going to be giving that away today. Um, there's going to be a contest link later in the show that Cassidy will be dropping. So keep an eye out for that link. And uh, I'm going to have a secret code, Ooh, secret code for the, uh, that's going to count for a thousand entries in that contest. So listen for that. So with that being said, let's get started. Tracy, what is up, my man? No, nothing much, man. You know, it's living, surviving, staying home, being safe. Yeah, uh, it's a nice 91 degrees here in Pasadena, California. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying the nice 60 degree weather in New York over here. So I don't know that East Coast weather. I'm doing doing I'm doing better over here. But yeah, let's let's talk more about that though. How you been surviving in uh in qu you know quarantine with the family and you you know I see you're in your little workspace. How, how, how's that uh how's that working out? Um, it, doing great. You know, uh, luckily me and my wife are still working, so that's great. But at the same time, I have a I have triplet boys. So we're doing the uh, the old homeschooling, and oh, it, man. it's a little rough. But hey, there's 14 <laughs> days left to school. 14 days left. That's it, man. It's just 14 days left of that. But then it's total freedom. There's nothing to distract them then, but you. Oh yeah, I'm gonna just like let them out in the backyard and just go nuts. It's like yeah. just don't burn the house down, don't burn the garage down. Go have fun. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, what 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 have you guys been uh, doing? Like watching, reading, video games, listening. You know. Oh man, like a. Uh, the, the boys that my boys love minecraft so they're doing minecraft oh man uh, i myself uh I, I think i'm when i have time to play games um i just downloaded a star wars uh fallen order oh my gosh oh god i'm like i'm so, I'm so mad i'm late to the game on this <laughs> I was like, oh my god oh. this is a great game dude i play i i it was like a half hour uh, earlier today that i just had to get in a little bit because i've had it for a while but i dropped out because i call it you know falling always jedi falling always i keep falling off the cliffs <laughs> all the time like non-stop off the cliff oh i'm gonna get this guy off the cliff yeah i mean yeah. that game is amazing it's beautiful especially if you're a star wars fan it's amazing yeah. how like the story like is like uh continued on in the game or whatnot um but i always love like you know like uh, those games the sandbox games where you just get to like go around discover and just do a bunch of different stuff but let me just say this when you like slice up these little alien animal things it's pretty gross <laughs> yeah it's gruesome it's like zzz, like cut off this guy's horn and i was like oh man oh poor goat <laughs> poor weird alien yeah, goat thing but it's so funny because for some reason you can't chop up stormtroopers like you just don't rip those dudes in half like they're it seems as if like their armor like protects them a little bit oh yeah, yeah. no listen it's that it's that really plastic uh that plastic is some really strong plastic <laughs> that's what we use to make all the figures we use that that stormtrooper plastic now there you go the flex the flex blast bleh, blaster bolts um but yeah i wanted to know like since you're at home you're working at home what are you listening to to keep yourself sane like well you know is there any like specific music you get into to get into the mood or are you, you an audio book person something like that or you TV know, shows, you know. I was gonna say I'm more I'm more of like a of a visual where like your show like off onto the side. Yeah. And um usually it has to be a movie or a show that I've watched before. So that way I like I'm I don't get so distracted. Yeah. But yeah, I usually don't listen to a lot of music, but I'll put on shows, man. Like I just discovered that um Netflix has Back to the Future One back on there. So I just went through the whole trilogy like the past few days when I was working and like you know it's always great to like have it in the background every once in a while turn around and be like oh yeah i love that scene that type of thing hey. and you you ever find yourself like yeah. working and you're like quoting the movie to yourself while, you, while you're sitting there 
Oh, 100 percent Especially with yeah. Back to the Future all the time, man. All the time. Yeah, I mean it's I've watched that movie like 250,000 times. It's like easily memorized. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so so I want to talk about your figures now. We're here to talk about the figure. I love hearing about you, and we're gonna get more yes. in, back into you, but let's talk about your figures now. Um, we got we had three DC characters that you did. You did Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, the Trinity, the Trinity of figures. Um, I wanted to talk about some of your design choices on that. Like, uh, you know, you had Superman with his wide cape. Let's see if we can get pictures of that up on the uh, up on the screen. You had Superman with his huge cape. You got Batman in a special pose. And then we have, uh, whoop, what do we got? There we go. So we got Superman with the huge cape. We got Wonder Woman with this awesome, these awesome sneakers, dude. And this Batman pose is wicked. So I wanted to talk about, like, you did some great design choices here. And I want to talk about that and what the challenges is from from drawing in 2d to 3d because you do a lot of awesome 2d drawings but now you have to think about the technical stuff for three dimensions so I want to know about what you uh which you bleh, with each one of them what'd you think yeah um <clears throat> thank you for you know for all the kind of words about the art i appreciate oh, that i love it um thank you with, with superman um my thing was like i always wanted to design a superman figure where you know it, you could see like you know him being powerful one and two like he was flying because you know that's one being like super powerful and whatnot is that he flies, right. and that's the challenge that you have a lot with um with like vinyl toys and designer toys. Sometimes you don't see a lot of motion or action within you know these toys, which is fine. Like I feel as if that's like an artist choice, but that's why I was that's where I feel as if I like to try to push these toys in that direction where. Um, to make something look like it's floating, but just based on the toy itself, not, no special gadgets, no magnets or whatnot. So that was one thing that I wanted to do with Superman. I really wanted to make it look like he was flying. And the idea came into my head, like, hey, let's like use the cape as a base. And I was talking to Kevin and Eric and all those guys, you know, at Unruly. And, and they're like, yeah, you know, draw it out, let's see if we can do it. And I think we can do it. And sure enough, you know, it came out awesome where it just looks like he was floating. And the pose itself is actually in the last many one pose, you know, this above Monopolis. So it's almost like my take and my homage itself. Yeah, that's like the famous pose you always have of him like flying down, you know, looking over everything. I really, th and you know what yeah. I also love that you did as a, as a design choice is the sneakers over the boots. Like, I think that's wild because you always know <laughs> Superman's got the boots, but like he's got them both. You know what I mean? I think sometimes I like to put a little bit of humor into like my art. So yeah. of course, like, yeah, I mean, everyone's like, why does he still wear the boots if he's wearing sneakers? I go, well, one, it's part of like him. It's always part of the character. Like, you know, yeah. that character has a certain uniform or costume. And to me, the sneakers are so much more to them that they'll put them over their own boots where now the boots yeah. end up becoming like socks to them. So yeah. I just think it just looks funny. I mean, it's a little funny, but also still looks good where it, it still connects the two together in a sense. Yeah, especially because, I yeah. mean, that's such a famous part of his of his look is the red boot stark contrast against the blue. And, you know, listen, yeah. he used to wear his underwear outside of his outfit all the time anyway. So, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> He's yeah, a great exactly. choice. Exactly. And then I want to yeah. talk about Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman, I was talking to you before we went live, is that I love these shoes on Wonder Woman. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, she's a warrior. You know what I mean? She's She yeah. can wear sneakers as a warrior, but she's hardcore so i love these boots and that the laces go all the way up and they're not like talk, let's talk, i want to hear about that design choice because that's and the and the lasso of course yeah so with the wonder woman sneakers i i kind of want to reference because she has like high boots and like i always think like gladiator boots and whatnot yeah. so i'm like what sneaker could translate into that so i started thinking of just like high top sneakers so like her shoes are an homage to classic high top sneakers and I just, you know, raise the collar of the sneaker a little bit higher to make it look like a boot. And of course, the one thing that you always notice with like gladiator boots is like they tie them all the way up, all the way up to their calves, the top of the collar. So again, I just added that to the sneaker itself. Um, and usually I always have like sneaker, like laces flowing out. But yeah. since she has lasso, like, you know what, let's do the same where the lasso is basically like a, a shoelace also. So the lasso becomes a shoelace lasso. And then that takes the place of just flowing sneaker lace or flowing laces from her shoes themselves. Um, but then it also had to find like a colorway that would match her. So then, you know, the red, black, and gold 
uh, that colorway of that sneaker, I think matches her whole like, you know, uniform also, the colorway from her uniform. Yeah, I do. I, I was telling you before, I love these. I would, I would wear them myself. I don't think I would rock them as good as her, but <laughs> I would absolutely wear those myself. And you know what? She, same thing. She ties them all the way up because she's a warrior. She's very disciplined. She's not like, you know, other people. She's got it. She's got that hardcore warrior discipline. She's got to get it wrapped up. Exactly. Yeah. It's like she can't be running around on the battlefield with like shoelaces flying around everywhere. Yeah, that's what that's what the lasso's for. But now let's talk about Batman because Batman, he's all pose and like here. Oh, and we didn't talk about this. Obviously, uh, uh, it's it's highlighted here. All of them have their initials. Uh, Bruce Wayne, BW, Bruce Wayne, right there in the laces. I love that yeah. touch. I mean, you had it with the other with the other trilogy that you did, but yeah. I want to talk about his pose. His pose, dude. What made you decide with that, especially with the cape? Because the, the cape brings the whole thing together. Um, you know, it's Batman. So Batman has to look badass. So, like, I wanted him to be in a pose where he looked like... One, one is I always associate Batman with being, like, a ninja. So I want him to be, like, in a ninja-type pose where, like, he is ready to, like... It looks like he's ready to go. Like, he's leaning back, ready to jump up and pounce on you type of thing. Um, and so that's the, po the idea of the pose. Then with the cape, especially since I love to push like the, the idea or the look of movement, using the cape to look like he's like leaning back and the cape is flowing out from him, very a la like Todd McFarlane back in the days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to wrap around him and just look like it's huge. Um, in the original 2D concept, it's funny because like the cape was way bigger. Yeah. And I remember when we first did the first prototype, they realized, man, this whole toy is going to be all cape if we use all we have to cut down on the cape and it made sense but before yeah. the cape was like wrapping around his feet so it was oh just a lot of cape but i just wanted to show a lot of movement like he's leaning back ready to go uh even having like a little bit of the batarangs inside in between the fingers oh yeah can um, we get, i want to see those pick the picture of the fists with the batarangs um i do love by the way that it's like a third that his cape is a third point of contact with the ground so that it actually what I was saying before, like making a technical yes. decision, like he's not going to lean and fall back. You know what I mean? Making it part. And I love that yeah. sweep, that sweep of the cape. So, oh man, now you, you should, you should make all these sneakers yourself. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I mean, all these sneakers, much like the first uh, uh, wave of superheroes and sneakers are all homages to pre-existing sneakers. So yeah. obviously change things around here and around here and there. Um, the thing that's great or the idea behind these three sneakers that I did for the DC Trinity. Since it's the DC Trinity, kind of like the top three of the DC characters of the DC universe, these shoes are paying homage to three basketball players who I love and mm -hmm. who in my mind are the top three basketball yeah. players in my mind. So that's why I had to match them up with sneakers from these top three guys. Um, oh, that's awesome. So all the sneaker, yeah, all the sneaker heads out there probably right of the way, right away would probably be able to match or figure out what sneakers they are. Um, that's my homage to those sneakers and those players matched up with the top three players or the top three characters in the DC universe. Right, yeah, the Trinity um, for your Trinity. But yeah, and th back to what you were saying about the cape, it, it goes back to what you were saying before about like learning to draw something in 2D and then figure it out in 3D. Um, the like you said, the cape is kind of like a balancer in case like so that way if Batman's leaning too far back, the cape is there to hold his balance. Um, yeah, yeah. Those are one of those little technical things that you have to know when like you're doing things in 3D. It's like it might look great in a drawing, but you got to figure out how it can actually work in 3D. Much like how we figured out like the cape was too big when we actually right. did the first like prototype. Uh, yeah. And we had to cut the cape down. It's like, those things you just figure out. But I'm, I'm really happy the way these things turned out. Oh dude, they came out awesome. And I love the colors. I love the actual color scheme for this Batman. This is, uh, well, this is like the new 52 colors, right? The yellow around the, uh, around the black? Yeah. And the awesome thing about it too, like uh, the team that painted it, shot Scott, I think Scott uh, painted uh, these prototypes. There is, if you look on the inside of the cape, since this is a um, reference to the Rebirth Batman suit, the cape oh, does have the inside, yeah. The inside has a little bit of a, a purple tint. So oh. it's one of those things when you see it up close, it has a little bit of a purple tint or fade in the inside of the cape. Um, oh, that's awesome. It's There's very actually subtle, story. yeah. There's an you image see? that I can turn to that shows it a little bit better. Do you want me oh, yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind. All right, let's see. Sorry, I looked through you... and do yeah. you see it back there? Can oh yeah, the purple, purple tint. Hue? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It's so subtle, but it looks great. Yeah. That's like, it's like I, little then, Easter eggs. Like, with all, 
Yeah. And then even though like the Batman suit, uh, Wonder Woman and Superman are all like uh, loosely based on their rebirth suits, I did add a little bit of my little like um, take on them. Like I always love suits that have a, a little bit of like the piping on it. So it kind of looks yeah. real. So it just doesn't yeah. look like it's straight up like tights. Um, yeah. And of course I grew up in with like nineties comics. So I love gigantic pouches. So it's like, shout out to Rob. That's what I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. I was seeing that picture before. It was huge. Yeah. yeah. You should make, you should make the pouch one day. Draw. I want to see your take on the pouch. <laughs> you ever see that cat with that's just made out of pouches. Yeah. Just pouches <laughs> everywhere. Um, and then, like, the other thing, too, is I love is, uh, especially with, you know, a lot of DC characters, also, like, Marvel characters, but especially with Batman and Superman, their chest albums, man. Like, I always loved it when they're, like, 3D and popping off, not just, like, they're printed on a figure. So yeah. that's the one thing I specifically wanted to do with, as you can see with the Batman figure, like, his logo is actually, like, you know, sculpted yeah, off. Yeah, it's actually physically um, out there. Yeah, and I think we're going to try to do I'm not sure if they are, but hopefully maybe a, a gloss black for the actual, like, logo. Um, yeah, I know they'll give it an extra Super dimension. Yeah, then I know for the Superman, you know, the S crest it has like a glossy red on it. So that's one thing I really want to do. That's awesome. Well, I, when I when I get mine, I'll, I'll I'll do I'll do my own viewing of it. I'll tell you how glossy. It is. Yeah. Yes. There you go. For, for anyone who's just tuning in, I just want to let you know we're doing an interview with uh, Uber Illustrator Supreme Tracy Tubera talking about him, his life, and these. Uh, these DC Trinity sneaker superheroes, but we were talking about sneakerheads. You're talking about sneakers. We got some questions from sneakerheads too. We wanted to ask, um, and I had one as oh, well. Okay. Where sneakerheads, there's like this this synergy between sneakerheads and designer toys. Like, what do you think? Why do you think it's like such a welcome space for for the sneakerhead movement to be part of? Because when I went to designer con, there was a whole booth, the art of sneakers. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it's like a whole, you know, part of the whole culture. So what do, you, what do you think it is about that that brings it together? I, I think it's it, it's one, like a love for the art. And especially since uh, a lot of designer toys are based on graffiti or like that urban art style. I think a lot of sneakerheads coming from that same culture see that and they they tend to flock to it and like, you know, associate with it. So like it's something that seems familiar to them. Um, and then the 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 fact that some toys are very limited edition hard to get that also translates over to sneakers that are hard to find hard to get so there's that collectability that i think sneakerheads like also um but i think for the most part it's just basically that uh the idea of that art is so reminiscent to what they like so i think that's why there's that easy connection between the two um and when a lot of hardcore sneakerheads look at sneakers as art themselves they yeah. tend to like <clears throat> looking at toys and it can understand the relation of toys being you know being art um right. so that's why i feel as if there's that that easy connection between the two yeah i mean it's also you know like you think of missy elliott and and also hip-hop culture also a big thing yeah. in both sneakerheads and uh you know designer toys i was i was you know watching a video of her warehouse full of sneakers that thing is insane yeah. <laughs> you know, it's amazing so i mean at your house between you and the the, the three boys and the what how many uh, how many sneakers are in your home i want to know how many sneakers are in your house <laughs> well luckily the boys are still young so they're not yeah. like we just keep a little bit of a they only get the essential sneakers because they bust through them so easily yeah. but admittedly for me i well at one point i had maybe two to three hundred pairs of shoes but i have literally like cut down yeah i had yeah. to cut down before the boys are born and then even now i still have a healthy amount but at the same time like it's not as big as it what, what it used to be yeah but I, at least hundred pairs of shoes, at least. Yeah, you know what? It's yeah, good so. artistic inspiration, right? For it's tax a write -off. purposes, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a write -off. It's research and development. Yeah, that's it. Man. <laughs> that's it. Call, call the accountant now. Um, and I just want to let you know, Matt Bolger from the Designer Toy Collective said he's a sneakerhead himself, and he wants to know what your holy grail sneaker is that you don't have. Oh, that's easy. Uh, again, I guess this goes back to my love for Back to the Future. I always want a pair of the power lacing uh, Nike mags. Yeah, because dude. You probably heard about it. Yeah. They they actually made a production run like early on, I think around like 2014 or so, where they weren't power lacing. But then a le later on, they did the actual power lacing shoes. And I always wanted a pair. Um, but it really just way too much out of my price range. 
but that yeah. is my holy grail because I one I love Back to the Future, and then two that shoe and when I first saw it in Back to the Future two I was like oh I always wanted that shoe so that is the holy grail. Oh my god, me. yeah, that w- I remember when that dropped and it was gone in like half a second and it was on it was like five times the price like thirty minutes later it was like all over you know all yeah. secondary market. I also wanted the the Ellen Ripley sneakers. Those oh, are ones uh, that I. Really? Yes, yeah, dude. Yes, the, those things are insane. The Reebok. I forgot what they're called, but yeah, I know yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, forget the name and, of it. And that's what I always love too, as as a sneakerhead. I love seeing how when a sneaker, a small part of a character in a movie becomes this big pop culture thing. And even though they kind of focus on the Nike mag in Back to the Future too. It wasn't like a huge thing, but people saw it for that split second and wanted them so badly. Uh, yeah. The shoes that Ripley wears in Alien, like again, they don't really mention them too much, but you see it enough, or you saw it enough in the movie, where like, oh, I want a pair of those. Yeah. Um, as soon as she steps into the that. power loader, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. That was, a, that was a, you see the shoes like, you're like, yeah, I want yeah. the sneakers. Oh, you know what I forgot? You know what I realized I forgot to do? I forgot to give everyone the secret code. We have oh, a secret yeah. code today. So I want everyone to pay attention to the secret code because we're doing a giveaway for Miles. Look at this beautiful piece. Another one with really great three-point contact, right? That third point of contact for balance. Um, and I mean, I don't know about you, but when I see this figure, I think he is the real Spider-Man. He is the real Spider-Man. That's the uh, secret code. Uh, you're going to get a link at, towards the end of the show. Look at that. Look at the MM on the laces from Miles Morales. But yes, uh, make sure you remember that code for when Cassidy posts the, uh, look at that. Oh yes. my gosh. Cassidy, we got any uh, questions you want to ask? You know, we audience? have, there's a ton of love from all of the platforms that I'm looking at. Um, but there are a few questions. Uh, Jen Edwards on the Facebook group wants to know, what's the, your favorite figure that you've ever designed? Oh. It's, yeah, it's like asking who's my favorite child. It's hard to say. I can't say. <laughs> well, listen, um, they're not they're not listening. You can say it when they're not listening. That's, I think that's the rule. Um, it, it, it is tough to say. Like, obviously, over my career, I've produced some, like, stuff on my own. Like, I really do love the stuff that I've done with Unruly just because as a comic book nerd growing up, I finally reached that peak of working officially with with Marvel to do like officially licensed Marvel pieces has been amazing. I love that. And then now with like the DC things coming out, like, oh my God, I'm so jazzed. Um, like we said before, like, we were talking briefly before the, before the show, um, Batman and Robin have always been my favorite characters. Like I love Batman and I love Robin. Um, so getting to do an officially licensed Batman figure has been really awesome. I, I love that a lot. Yeah. Um, outside of comic book realm, uh, my future boy piece, which is like my homage to Back to the Future, like that is probably my other favorite uh, piece I've done. Yeah. It's a cool piece, by the way. Nice. Thank yeah. you, yeah. There's, um, there's another question from Isabel Anderson on YouTube. Uh, she wants to know if there's a, a sneaker you've seen in a movie that should be made. In real life? Yeah, like in real life. Aside I think, from yeah. Back to the Future and aside from Aliens. <laughs> hmm. That's a very good question. This is a little fun, like trivia. It's like um, in Tim Burton's Batman, uh, they made his boots. His boots were actually in the first movie. I believe they were Air Trainer ones, and then in Batman Returns, he actually has a pair. He wears a pair of Jordan sixes. So like the bottom of them are the actual sneakers, but the tops are like manufactured to look like his boot. I don't know if I'd, I don't think anybody would ever wear them, but I would love for them to actually produce the Batman boot meshed in with like the Jordan Six, and that would be so amazing. I mean, I would just buy it as a collector. Um, yeah, just get a mannequin, funny. stick them on a mannequin. Yeah, or maybe I'd wear them at once, but it might look weird wearing shorts and Batman boots. <laughs> no man, I mean, maybe a, maybe a little weird. <laughs> no way, that would be amazing. You just got basketball shorts on and these giant <laughs> boots. Yo, I'll meet you on the court. You know, that would be <laughs> insane. <laughs> Are those Batman boots? Yes, they are. Yeah. Then you pull out a grappling thing and <laughs> slam. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. I love that. Yeah. If they ever produced that shoe, I'd buy it in a minute. Probably wear it once, but that would be it. <laughs> yeah. And then you just, like I said, then you just stick it on a mannequin somewhere in the corner of the house. Or you yeah. wear it in private. You wear, you wear it in private when no one's looking. <laughs> oh, Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. That's Let's get Batman nuts. One. That's Batman 1, yeah. Yeah, you, you want the Batman Returns. Uh, I have another one here. 
what is your what is a deep cut DC character that you would love to make? Now, Joe Gardner in the Designer Toy Collective wanted to know he, he wants Aquaman. Oh. He's a big Aquaman fan, but I want to know deep cut, deep cut DC. First of all, let me just say Aquaman is a great character. I am in the boat where I think Aquaman is amazing. So like, I would the love boat. to do Aquaman eventually. <laughs> yeah, and no pun intended, but I'm on the boat where Aquaman is dope. Um, you could have him pouring fish out of his shoes, you know? <laughs> yeah. deep, is this a deep DC character you said? Yeah, deep, deep cut, cut DC. DC. It doesn't have to be so deep DC. cut, I mean, you know. Yeah. Honestly, like, I have two. Uh, one would be Karate Kid from Legion of Superheroes. Like a lot of people don't realize Karate Kid, there was a Karate Kid character, DC Comics, and um, the original one where he had the crazy disco like collar. Oh my uh, god. Val Armor. <laughs> yeah, I'd wanted I would love to be that guy. Just because like also like the whole Legion of Superheroes, like those those character designs were still ridiculous. The classic <laughs> Silver Age one that I would just love to do that karate kid version. The other one would be Commandy, the last boy on earth. Just because Commandy The Last Boy on Earth. Oh yeah. my god, Commandy. Oh my god. Because he's such a weird character, but I love the premise of just this one random kid living in like a poco, poco, post-apocalyptic world where like, you know, there's animal humanoids. But also he's wearing like jorts, which makes no sense. No shirt. Yeah. But he had like boots on. So I feel like he's perfect for like sneakers. Like he needs sneakers. He doesn't need boots. He needs some cool sneakers to wear where there's jorts. <laughs> I mean, you could do that with a lot. You could do that with then you could do put Conan the Barbarian in those sneakers too. Like, yeah, yeah, there you, know? you go, yeah. That that would be awesome. That'd be my deep cuts. Yeah, <laughs> Commandy. Oh my god, what a throwback, <laughs> dude! I can't even believe you pulled that out. That was I wasn't expecting that deep of a cut. I was like, oh, maybe he's gonna say Etrigan the Demon or something. Oh, that was that was pretty deep, <laughs> Commandy. Let's see what else we got. You got any more questions from the audience? Because I got some more questions here. Um, we do have a question from Misty Molina on uh, Facebook. On the Facebook group, what villain would you love to give a sneaker design or thought um, or think would look cool in sneakers? Can you repeat that again? Uh, sorry. So just what villain um, would you love to do a sneaker design for, basically? Ooh, as in a toy? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Ooh. Um, yeah, you know what's so funny? Like, I would love to do villains just because a lot of people have hit me up like oh when are you going to do villains and obviously it just depends on what happens and whatnot but if i had my choice of villains like from dc i obviously would love to do a joker hmm. the joker nice or, or, joker would pretty, probably um, have some dark wicked side. sneakers joker oh, dark side dark side um I'm trying to think uh from from the marvel side i would obviously love to do uh i love like big hulking like a villain so like Thanos would be great um Apocalypse yeah. would be awesome um oh I'd love God. to do Sabretooth uh Sabretooth would be great just because like the fur and everything I could just draw him in a cool little pose um Venom obviously I'd oh, love to do Venom Venom would be insane what is oh man what his shoes oh man because I saw that drawing you did of Venom with the sneakers and that was wicked oh, yeah. I mean, what would that look like in three dimensions you know what I mean oh man I would just yeah, I would love tendrils. to have them all hulky and tendrils, like liquidy tendrils, like coming out from like above him and behind him would be so awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, just so he looks all gooey and stuff, that'd be cool too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but awesome. I'm totally down for villains too. So unruly, you want villains? Come to me, I'll do villains and <laughs> sneakers too. <laughs> Doesn't have to be heroes, right? You can have the villains, give them their love too. You know, maybe they would be happier if they had a nice pair of shoes. Yeah, true. It's probably why they're all so angry, exactly. they're uncomfortable. So uh, Cody, Cody <laughs> Edwards. Cody Edwards wants to know who is your favorite graf graffiti artist or favorite pop artist? Jeez, uh, favorite graffiti artist. Right now? Uh, I mean, I think the standard answer would always be cause. But I, I actually am super like influenced by a lot of my friends who are artists right now. So like Tristan Eden, I love. Uh, shout out to Tristan. I love the work of like uh, my fellow unruly artists, Kano Kid, uh, Urban oh, Aztec, yeah. Jesse Hernandez, those dudes always like, I get inspired by seeing my friends just doing their thing and doing great stuff. Um, back in the days, one of my favorite artists was uh, Dave Kinsey when he used to do a lot of character stuff. And I used to love how he would draw like kind of ugly characters, but made them look so cool. I loved it. It was very just intricate looking, you know, characters. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, other pop artists i mean those guys in a, in a weird way have carried over into pop art yeah, yeah. 
uh, I, it's weird. Like, I don't really have one particular favorite one, but at the same time, I just love seeing artists doing their thing. Like, that's what's so great about art nowadays. There's just so many different people with different styles. And like, it's just awesome to see what, when they're doing it really well, um, I get inspired. Do you feel like, uh, like you have, you have like an inspirational, like almost like a nemesis that also is not, not like an, like an enemy, but like, who's like the one who's always like ribbing you to do better. Like when you get defeated, you know, it's like, it's like Kano or like someone like that, you see them and they give you a hard time because you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a dark place. I can't, <laughs> I can't create. Do you have someone like that? You know? Oh, if, that, if that's the case, it is Kano, but he's a dick. But <laughs> <laughs> Where's my, yeah, where's Kano my, where's too. my. Where's my sensor button? <laughs> yeah, shout out Kano. No, Kano's like my homie. And like, I feel as if he's one of those dudes that like, much like him, uh, again, not in a bad way, but seeing him doing his thing and doing it well inspires me to keep doing it. Uh, or to, like, to up my game in a sense, much like with Jesse and Urban Aztec, like when those dudes are doing their things, like, and they're doing great at it, it gets me inspired. Um, another artist that people might not know of, but Quest One. Uh, he's actually like an older brother to me. He taught me everything I know. Like when I see him doing his stuff, shout out Cheeto Quest One. Um, when I see him doing his stuff, I, I get super inspired. It's like, I love just seeing my friends doing their thing. Cause like, it's just, especially when you know them on a personal basis, yeah. when you know what they're doing and everything they're going through to just keep doing what they're doing. It, it, it makes you think and look back at yourself wondering like, oh, what am I doing? How come I can't like, you know, um, yeah. push out all the stuff they're doing. So it's very inspiring. And like, they're all, you know, they're all jerks. I still love them. That's what I'm saying, man. I, like I said, I don't mean enemies. I mean like your 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 friend your frenesis, you know, the ones who keep you honest. You know what I mean? So here's here's a here's yeah, a good one. Exactly. Give each of those characters a theme song. Diana, Bruce, Clark, Superman. Oh, give, give give them a theme. Your specific figures. Give them a theme song. Dang, it's tough just because like when you think about the theme songs that are always attached to them, like Superman, Superman movie, that that theme song that stuck to like Superman, I can't think of any other song that would go with them. Um, I think Batman would probably listen to metal. That's why they gave him that series, Batman Metal. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that. Maybe a Metallica song would be great for him. Yeah. Um, uh, dude, I'm in, I'm in that boat where I love that the Zack Snyder theme song for Wonder Woman. Like oh, with the, with that the heavy guitar. guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, I love that theme song for her. Um, yeah, like, dude, that, that's a great question. I don't know. I couldn't, off the top of my head, I couldn't think of a theme song that I'd give each character. Wow. But definitely, I think Batman I deserves you. some sort of metal. You did stump me. I think I Batman stumped. deserves some, like, metal song. Oh, yeah, Superman, Batman. I know. Superman's got to listen to something nice, you know? He's probably, you know, he's, like, listens to cl classic Kelly Clarkson or something, you know? On there. <laughs> 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 Got any more questions, uh, uh, Cassidy? Um, you know, there was one more, um, or really, yeah, two more. Um, Chris M Ramirez on YouTube wanted to know, what would your next trilogy set be if you had to choose? Oh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, if I got to choose, for me personally, um, the ne next one would, would be three DC characters. Um, I'm not sure if people at home or even Alex, if you know this, but I have triplet boys and yeah. their names are inspired by the secret identity names of the first three Robins. So I have one son named, Gr one son named Grayson. I have a second son's name is Jace. Our third son's name is, uh, third son is named Blake, kind of like a play off of Tim Drake. So yeah. Grayson for Dick Grayson, Jace for Jason Todd and Blake for Drake. So if I had my choice, I would do Red and uh, Red Robin as like the next trilogy set just so that wow. way i can say i did toys kind of like for my boys yeah that's awesome and that's since like cute. growing up for me like again like i love batman and robin but thank you uh but i was i always i was that kid that associated more with robin just because like batman was the older character but robin was that kid that would go on adventures with the, the cool adult so growing up reading comic books i always associated more with robin. Um, oh, that's that's interesting take yeah because i want like comic books Every, every kid like kind of attaches to a different character. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people love the Spider-Man for that reason. Like he's young. Spider-Man, by the way, real Spider-Man. If you guys yeah. missed it, real Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, what about Damian Wayne? Would you put him in there somewhere? I mean, if, if I could do all the Bat Boys, I'd do all the Bat Boys. Um, I'd even throw in a, um, 
uh, Robin, um, got, uh, Cassie. Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, right? dude, I would even do her too. Like, if I could do all the Robins, I would do all the Robins. Uh, That's but awesome. Most specifically, though, if I could do those three Robins, I'd be a happy camper just because they would be for my boys. And then I would say, hey, then I would have a Batman figure in a weird way, which is me. And then I would have the yeah. three other figures, which are my boys. And then our whole family would be there in toy form. And that'd be awesome. Cassidy, should, should we give him a nice aw? Aw. I was going to anyways. Don't worry. <laughs> Did you have another one? Um, one person wanted to know, um, just what's your favorite Batman and Joker? Robert uh, Tremoli on the Facebook group wanted to know. Favorite Batman, Batman and Joker, Joker. is like... Movie I believe or... movie in terms of movies like iterations or maybe you can say animated series if that's your favorite. Uh dude, I I in the boat again with the boat plan. Jeez. I mean in the bat boat where I believe that like Mark Hamill is one of the greatest jokers ever. Yeah. Um his voicing of of the Joker in the Batman anime series is so in my opinion on point that I love it. Um obviously from an acting point of view like real life uh it's hard you know, Heath Ledger's was Joker was great, and then obviously now Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is amazing. Um, Batman, like, dude, I loved the way Batfleck looked in you know in the suit and the way he looked. I thought it was great. Oh, yeah. Um, obviously, Christian Bale though is like my favorite Batman, um, and I'm actually intrigued to see what Robert Robert Pattinson does for Batman. I'm I'm really curious to see what you know he can pull out. So yeah. that'd be cool. He's a talented dude. I can't wait to see what he's got. Um, yeah. Oh, before I forget, uh, uh, Cassidy, if you want to drop that Gleam link for the uh, for the contest, I yes, mean, I hope I everyone do. remembers the secret code, the secret code I gave. But um, Tracy, yeah, for what are we giving away, Tracy? Oh yeah, we're giving miles. away miles. Here we, go. Here we go, dropping it Brooklyn. all over the place. Tracy, before we go, give give us something inspirational to t- tell, inspire us to get through our our the rest of our quarantine. Oh geez. Uh <laughs> no pressure. Jeez, I know pressure. <laughs> no, I just wonder uh, if you have any closing closing, you know? Jeez. Uh, I guess I would just say this. Like, hey guys, you know, stay home, stay safe, take this time to enjoy your time with your family. Take this time to enjoy this time, you know, with yourself. Uh try to do some self-improvement, stay healthy, exercise if you can. Uh, try to take on a, try to take on something that you always said you want to take on, but you just never had the time to, because now basically you have that time to do it. Um, for all my artist friends out there, uh, keep doing your art, man. Art is like, art is like a muscle. It's like a talent. Like every basketball player shoots like a thousand jumpers to make, to perfect his jump shot. As an artist, we got to keep drawing, draw every day to get better at our art. So at our skill. Um, and that's it, man. Just have fun. Be happy if you can. Being, that's what I'm talking about, man. Sound and sound. Yeah. You did a good job. That was inspiring, man. <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm saying. No pressure. Oh my gosh. I knew you oh, had geez. it. I was sweating. I was like, oh my God, the pressure, Alex. What's going on? Man? Sweat. I mean, I mean, my chest, uh, uh, it's it's swelling with how inspired I am. Man, I told you you could do it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you but, inspired uh, me, Alex. You inspired me to, to get that, to say that. The rotation. It's a, ro- it's a nonstop yeah. s- cycle of, of inspiration. But listen, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Tracy, thank you for joining us here. I hope you had a good, everyone had a good time. Uh, you're a great audience. Uh, listen, we have that Gleam contest I just spoke about. Uh, it ends tonight at midnight, um, and it is U.S. only, unfortunately. Um, if you have other giveaways, you listen, if you're interested in giveaways, we also have Collect the Day May going on all month, 31 days, 31 challenges. It's already the 7th. Today is Red Alert. Um, we want to see all your red collectibles to win a Deadpool uh, 6 scale. Cassidy, if you want to just drop that link in again. And yes. uh, yeah, and we will see you tomorrow live at 4 p.m. Pacific time for See It and Win It. We're going to be giving away the Bucky Barnes from Infinity Wars, the six scale by Hot Toys. Tracy's Bucky Barnes. Bucky Barnes sneakers. Amazing. Amazing. Come oh, on. But, see, and that, Come that's on. another thing, too. I, I would love to do like, a, like Bucky Barnes is always like my, my, in my mind, Marvel's version of Robin. So, like, you know, that character is yeah. great too. I always love that character. I love how he grew up to be the Winter Soldier. Amazing. Great character Listen. development. When we're done, me and you, we got we to commiserate. We got we to put, the, we gotta put oh, our yeah. next action plan together, right? But uh, thank you, I everyone, agree. for I watching. <laughs> and thank you, Tracy. You were awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Pre order the DC figs. Pre order pre-order those DC figs. Click that button for pre order. Click, click, click. And thank you all. Have a great one. And uh, by the way, 
Don't forget to let your geek side show and your stay inside show. Bye, guys. Bye.